Good morning and welcome to the Chorley and Leyland Methodist Circuit Online Worship for Sunday the 18th of June 2023. Today is Father's Day and we will be remembering fathers within our prayers, both our opening prayers and then our prayers of intercession. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us today. Jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer. We affirm God's promised presence where his people live and care. Praise the God who keeps his promise. Praise the Son who calls us friends. Praise the Spirit who among us to our hopes and fears attends. Jesus calls us to confess Him, Word of life and Lord of all. Share flesh and frailness, saving all who fail or fall. To his holy human story, tell his tales that all may hear. Tell the world that Christ in glory came to earth to meet us here. Jesus calls us to each other, vastly different though we are. Creed and colour, class and gender, neither limit nor debar. Join the hand of friend and stranger, join the hands of age and youth. Join the faithful and the doubter in their common search for truth. Jesus calls us to his table rooted firm in time and space, where the church in earth and heaven finds a common meeting place. Share the bread and wine his body, share the love of which we sing. Share the feast for saints and sinners, hosted by our Lord and King. Our opening prayers are responsive. When I say the words, Father God, would you please respond, we praise you. Father God, we praise you. Let us pray together. Loving God, we come on this Father's Day reminded that you are the Father of us all. You have been with us from our birth, guiding, nurturing and sustaining us. Father God, we praise you. You have taught us and brought us to maturity, always concerned for our welfare, constantly seeking the best for us. Father God, we praise you. 
Whenever we have needed you, you have been there, willing to listen and advise, yet giving us freedom to make our own choices and find our own way. Father God, we praise you. You have called us to be your family, a people united through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him you have revealed your love, a love that reaches out to us day by day, despite our failure to love you in return. Father God, we praise you. Teach us to live as your children, to, li to hear and follow your voice, to respond to your goodness. Father God, we praise you. Teach us to bear your name with pride, to share with others through word and deed the joy you have given us. Father God, we praise you. Gracious God, forgive us that we call you our Father, but fail to live as your children. We do not trust you as we should, preferring instead to follow our own path. We are reluctant to accept your will, not following your call to us. We are slow to seek your guidance, but swift to forget you and wander from your side. We all too rarely thank you for what we have, but all too often complain when we do not receive what we ask for. Father God, we praise you. And finally, receive our thanks for the fathers you have given us, all they have meant to us, all they have given, and all they have done in so many ways. Father God, we praise you in the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, Father of the fatherless, in whom all families are blessed, I love the way you father me. You gave me life, forgave the past, now in your arms I'm safe at last.
Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, and freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meanderings of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Saviour, Redeemer and Friend. Amen. The context to my thoughts for today is found in verses 35 and 36 of Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Now from these words we can perhaps imagine that Jesus seems a little disturbed and upset because he sees in the crowds lots and lots of people who need someone to care for them and to show them the way to true life. That is true life in God. He said they have no shepherd. In other words, they have no one to care for or about them. No one to care for their soul. They were like scattered sheep looking for their shepherd, their guide, their protector. And then in verse 37, Jesus says, the harvest truly is plentiful. In other words, there are plenty of people who need the Lord and to know about Jesus and what he's done for them. But far too many people don't know these things. However, Jesus goes on to say, whilst these people need the Lord, the labourers are few. Few too many folk want anything to do with God, but even fewer want to work for him in what Jesus describes as the harvest fields. Even among those who accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour, few are willing to actually do his work. And this is despite what we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that there will be a special reward in heaven for those who work to bring people to Christ. Jesus continues his conversation and gives the disciples the key to finding the much needed workers. The first of which, according to verse 38, depending on which version of the Bible you are reading or looking at, is either to pray or to ask. Jesus, of course, believed deeply in prayer. I think he was very much of the opinion that prayer is the ultimate solution to our problems. In this case, Jesus establishes the problem is twofold. The first part is that there are lots of people who are hurting and who have no one to care for them. The second is that people aren't exactly lining up at the door to serve the Lord by caring for people and reaching out to them. As Jesus says, the labourers are few. But Jesus also says we need to ask or pray the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers. I really love how Jesus uses the word therefore in this passage. It's as if he's saying, no, we've got a problem. And so it's obvious what we've got to do. We've got to pray. I'd like you to also notice, if you will, that Jesus doesn't give them tips on how to recruit the workers. Hey guys, let's offer these incentives to people if they will work for us. There's none of that. There are no tricks, no gimmicks. He simply says, fellas, we have a serious issue. So we have to pray. Jesus knows that the ultimate solution in dealing with these problems was prayer. But prayer must be in accordance with the Lord's will. Isn't it interesting in this reading that it's God's harvest? God is the one who needs the workers and yet we are the ones who are told to pray. Perhaps it's a way to show how committed God is to working in response to the prayers of his people. Some things are clearly God's will, but he still needs women and men to pray. This is a story of the Bible. God and humans working together. God is committed to working through us in regards to his dealings here on earth. This is why Jesus prayed as a man and why we must pray. 
Prayer is what gets God involved in a situation. But let's return to our text. There is a harvest of hurting and lost people. A whole group of folk who need somebody to reach out to them. And Jesus tells us to pray. Obviously, Jesus believed God answers prayers. But I think one of the reasons we don't pray specifically is because we very often don't really and truly, deep down in our hearts, believe that God will answer our prayer. And therefore we pray in generic or broader terms. If we truly believe our prayers move the Lord to action, shouldn't it cause us to pray fervently, passionately and specifically? So what is the key to getting additional workers to serve in God's fields? Well, according to Jesus, the key is prayer. But of course, it will be very hypocritical to pray for additional workers if we are not prepared to serve and work for the Lord ourselves. And so in conclusion, I have a couple of questions for you. Will you work for Jesus? Will you pray for more workers? Because, friends, the souls of women and men who are known to us are both in need and at stake. Amen. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbor, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. Jesus Christ is We come now to our prayers of intercession, which are also responsive, 
when I say the words, Lord God, our Father, would you respond, reach out in love? Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. And at the end of the intercessory prayers, I'll invite you to share with me the Lord's Prayer. And I would encourage you to say that in whichever form you choose, whether it be a more modern version or the traditional one. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you know the joy of fatherhood and also the pain. For you witnessed the life and death of your son, and you see each day the triumphs and tragedies of us, your children. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. In Jesus, you experienced the delight of being a father as you watched him grow and mature into adulthood, as you saw him baptised in the Jordan, as day by day he responded to your guidance, faithful to the very last, a beloved son with whom you were well pleased. Yet also you experienced agony in the horror of the cross, the pain the humiliation and the sorrow he endured for our sakes. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. In each of us you find pleasure when we pursue what is good, when we honour your commandments, when we seek your will and respond to your guidance. But we cause you also so much pain through our weakness, our repeated disobedience, our deafness to your call and our rejection of your love. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. Gracious God, you know the joy and the pain of fatherhood. And so now we pray for fathers everywhere. Help them to appreciate both the privilege and the responsibility they bear and teach them to give freely of themselves so that they may discover the happiness, the fulfilment and the inexpressible rewards that fatherhood brings. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. Give them wisdom, patience and dedication and grant them strength to persevere when children bring tears as well as laughter, anxiety as well as hope, pain as well as pleasure. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. Reach out, we pray, to all fathers in such circumstances. Those who question their ability to cope or who fear they have failed. Those striving to offer support or who feel they have nothing left to give. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love. And finally, Hear our prayer for children who on this Father's Day feel pain instead of joy. Those whose fathers have died, those orphaned as children, those who have been mistreated, rejected, abused and those from broken homes who barely see or know their fathers. Lord God, our Father, reach out in love through Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us and all those who we love and all those we should love this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>